Hello and welcome to the latest Progress Wrestling Hype Show. I'm Jonas from the Wrestling with Jonas podcast. Uh, joined as always by my good friends, good pal, ring announcer extraordinaire, Mike Mad Dog Angus. Mike, it's been a few weeks. How are you doing, buddy? It has, Jonas. Yeah, how have you been? All good? Yeah, not too bad. Not too bad. And uh, I say catching up with my uh, weekly dose of wrestling. And uh, I've seen Wrestling Witch Face, which dropped on demand not too long ago. Um, but uh, of course, we are here today to hype up the next Progress Wrestling show. And it's not just any sort of show, Mike, is it? It's a super show. Super um, show. 12 matches we're going to be talking about today. 12 matches we're going to be hyping up. It's going to be absolutely fantastic from the uh, from the spiritual home of Progress Wrestling in Camden, the Electric Ballroom, on uh, Sunday the 27th of November. So just a few days around the corner. 3 p.m. kickoff. I'm going to get that out there now. It's going to be a 3 p.m. start time for Chapter 146. Uh, but, but Mike, you've been as busy as ever in uh, Progress Wrestling HQ um, up there in Liverpool. And uh, like I say, a hell of a show to look forward to. Um, but I alluded to it earlier. Wrestling Witch Face dropped on the network and on demand not long ago. Another amazing show from Progress. Uh, what do you remember about that show, my friend? Because there was there were so many highs and uh, so much action. Uh, we're going to be alluding to a lot of it throughout the course of this hype show. And a lot of it kind of feeds into some of the matches we're going to be hyping up as well, Mike. Uh, give us your kind of recollection of that fantastic day, that Sunday in Camden. Well, yeah, we've been the Halloween show. Obviously, I was dressed as Mario to uh, to produce that show. So that that's always good fun, you know, when... Uh, when the wrestlers see you dressed like that, they really do take you very seriously. So, uh... <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, what a show. We had the uh, semi-finals of the MPS 8. There was all sorts going on. There was Halloween hijinks all about the show where Lana Austin was in cosplay as Tifa Lockhart. There was, uh, there was a bloodbath for somebody. If you haven't watched it already, you need to make sure you see that. You know, um, classic Attitude Era Brood-style bloodbath there. So, that's, you know, proper... Proper old school wrestling there. And uh, <laughs> uh, we had a great show, you know, brilliant athleticism on the way as always. Uh, Luke Jacobs versus Big Damo Ooh. was an absolute banger for the Atlas uh, Atlas Championship. You know, really enjoyed that one. And there was just so much talent on display. It was uh, it was great to see Maggot back over. And even yeah. uh, even great to see Charles Crowley back in the, back in the ballroom causing havoc as usual. So, uh, yeah, That's so it. all exciting stuff and definitely well worth watching on the WWE Network, Peacock TV and on Progress On Demand. You need to make sure you check that chart definitely before you come to the show on November 27th. <laughs> Absolutely. But Baby Ellison made her Progress debut course, in yeah. that, uh, um, that, that tremendous tag match. And, of course, we had that uh, fantastic main event for the Progress World title, Spike Treve and Dan Maloney, of course. But uh, check that out. It's available now. Uh, progress on demand ww network do yourself a favor go and uh, sign up to progress on demand if you haven't done so already the link will be in the description to this hype show and uh, like i say feel yourself in before you go and see chapter 146 they think it's all over mike let's just bring up the poster it's a hell of a poster um, and it's the, am I right in thinking that the, the, the Football World Cup starts that same weekend? I'm not a big football fan, you can probably tell. Um, but uh, hence the uh, the name, uh, harking back to the 1966 World Cup final. Um, but uh, And hence why it's a super show, hence why it's a 3pm kickoff, Mike. That's it, my friend. And you know, uh, yeah, the World Cup starts. So the World Cup starts on Sunday, the 20th. Uh, so it's a week into the World Cup. Uh, there are a couple of matches on during the show, but I don't think it's anything that'd be a major importance to uh, to our group, to be honest. So uh, I think uh, Canada versus China may, may be on at a similar time to the show, but uh, you know, I can catch up the highlights on That's that. That's largely one. missable, isn't it? Eh? That's largely <laughs> missable. Let's be honest. <laughs> I'm, sure, I'm sure it'll be an enjoyable match, but uh, you know, we've got twelve enjoyable matches on that day that can compete with that because I, I can catch them highlights on match of the day. You know, <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. But this is what we're going to be talking about. Progress, Chapter 146. They think it's all over. Um, it will be uh, come the end of November the 27th from Camden Electric Ballroom. And running along the bottom of the screen, you can see exactly where you can get tickets from. Uh, just go to progresswrestling.com forward slash tickets. It will transport you to the Dice FM app where you can get your tickets for They Think It's All Over for Unboxing Live 5. Deal or no deal? 
30th of December and uh, all future progress shows will be up there. Get your tickets. You do not want to miss out on this super show or that unboxing show at the end of the year. 30th. I'll be there. Can't wait. Full of surprises like they always are. That's it, mate. And just when you've had enough of the uh, the Christmas turkey and the and the family who've been over for all the Christmas, you can come out on the 30th and go to a great wrestling show just to round off the year. And uh, and that is going to be absolutely stacked full of surprises. That one, you know, you just you don't know what to expect at that. And uh, you know, I, I already don't know what to expect. It'll be fun uh, trying to do the music for everybody. <laughs> It will be a, blast. It? <laughs> a great way to uh, end what has been an amazing year for pro wrestling and an amazing year for progress wrestling. But uh, let's start looking at <coughs> we've got 12 matches to get through, Mike. 12 matches. Can you believe it? And the first one we're going to talk it. about is this one here. Charles Crowley versus Elijah. And uh, this has been a, dare I say, a partnership, a storyline, a feud that's been brewing for many months. Some might say that it started when these two first clapped eyes on one another backstage, chapter 110. Um, I know this because I've been doing research on Elijah recently, um, but it has kind of got a bit wild in 2022 for various reasons. Charles Crowley um, believes that Elijah was responsible for his loss in Super Strong Style this year, back in June. And Crowley's had a few losses, um, most notably to, to Maggot. Um, and uh, like I say, these two are going to clash this uh, epic storyline between these two uh, former friends, now bitter rivals, is going to culminate Sunday the 27th, Chapter 146, they think it's all over. So uh, these two uh, renowned UK top talent uh, are going to go head to head uh, in the ballroom a couple of Sundays time, Mike. Cannot wait. And, you know, the, the story for this one is, is a strange one, to be honest. I've been watching it develop and, uh, you know, Crowley went missing for a little while after his loss yeah. to Maggot. And uh, he seemed to lose his identity slightly, you know, with the uh, with Maggot pinching his, his hat and his, and his outfit and everything. And then we saw these missing posters appear at shows for, for looking for Crowley. He was, he was missing right through the deadly violence until um, the sort of tail end of that, that these numbers started appearing on Elijah's uh, as he was doing his entrance, uh, his music, the numbers started to appear on it. And it all turns out that it's a, a formula that Crowley had in his mind. But uh, he's pointed out that Elijah, he, he, he'll he never lose to the same opponent twice. He'll lose to them and then he'll beat them in the next match. And it, it's happened against numerous opponents right through his whole time of progress. And Crowley is... Uh, He's concerned because in the, the formula, from what I can see, would mean mm. that Crowley would have to lose at the next chapter. So uh, that is going to be uh, really interesting to see what happens there. And uh, well done to the guy who worked out the code online because, uh, you know, it had me stumped for sure. I was looking at them numbers and, uh, you know, I've got a degree, but uh, it wasn't in mathematics. I'll give you that. <laughs> <laughs> no, and I, I looked at the poster and I, I could not figure it out either, but uh, all credit to those that did uh, figure it out. Um, but that's going to be a, a great match and a great combination to, I'd say, what was a, a good partnership, um, but an even better rivalry. And these two, like I say, fantastic talents from the UK scene, having uh, the best years of their the best year of their career on the uh, British wrestling scene. And uh, what better place to have that uh, that that match to culminate that feud, that rivalry on November the 27th in the ballroom. Um, but uh, what about this one here? This one has been brewing for a while now. Chuck Mambo uh, versus Kid Lycos. And it's no ordinary match, Mike. It's going to be a hair versus mask match. We all saw what happened the, the, the tram shed in Cardiff a few weeks ago uh, where Kid Lycos cut one of the braids from Chuck Mambo's head. Um, and, and like I say, they've been playing mind games, uh, Lycos Jim and Sunshine Machine, uh, really winding the situation up to the point where the match had to be uh, called out. And uh, Chuck Mambo did exactly that. And he's uh, um, called out Kid Lycos for the electric ballroom, they think it's all over, hair versus mask match. Um, th there's always got to be a, a great stipulation to kind of end a, a bit of rivalry like this. And we're going to see it for ourselves on Sunday the 27th, Mike. Yeah, one thing I've noticed about this feud is it started off with Lycos Jim, uh, you know, Singling out Chuck Mambo out the, as if he's the weaker link of Sunshine Machine. Now, these guys are two absolutely class athletes. 
And, uh, you know, I don't know why they've gone after Chuck, but uh, but I tell you what, um, one great thing these guys are doing is they are both raising money for charity uh, leading into this one. So make sure you head over to Kid Like Us's and Chuck Mambo's uh, Instagram pages and check it out and Twitter as well. I believe they're raising money for Macmillan and also for some other charities there. So uh, definitely, if you can donate to that, that would be great. And the thing I'm going to have to wonder is I've seen uh, Lycos when he fought Chris Brooks. The, his mask got damaged, and I saw a, a glimpse of his of his face. He was covered in blood due to that matchup. But, you know, but I, I saw his face. I don't think he wants to lose that mask for sure. Mm. That is a huge part of his identity that he wears that, and he is this, you know, he is this wolf character as well. and But the same with Chuck. You know, nobody wants to see a Chucky egg out there at the uh, at the ballroom. So uh, no. we're going to have to have to see what happens. But it could be interesting. And definitely, if you can get involved and donate some money to charity, I'm sure it would be so appreciated by everybody involved in that one. So uh, great stuff. Really looking forward to seeing what happens. And, uh, you know, it was the sickest game of rock, paper, scissors I've ever seen like us gym play when they ended up cutting a big <laughs> chunk of uh, Chuck's hair out in Cardiff. Wow. But... Uh, you know, we'll have to see what happens at the ballroom. And, um, you know, somebody could be going on Mastix, somebody could be going on Bald. We'll have to see. Absolutely. Absolutely. And uh, how about this one here? Alexis Falcon versus Laura Di Matteo. Laura Di Matteo has had some amazing matches in the progress ring in 2022. Several encounters with Kanji for the Progress World Championship didn't quite come out on top during those occasions. Uh, Alexis Falcon has been on a roll recently as well in a progress ring two of the best females in the game. Um, and uh, these two are going to be clashing on Sunday the 27th. They think it's all over. Let's say two of the very best, not just female performers, but uh, wrestlers in general in the UK. And that's going to be a fantastic match, Mike. Definitely, yeah. Lara Di Matteo had a great feud with Kanji over the uh, over the summer. Was really battling hard in those matches and really showing a tough side to her. And then she's had a little bit, a little bit of time away, miss, missed a couple of shows with us. And then she's going to be back. And uh, what better way to... You know, prove that she deserves a title shot going going into next year than to beat Alexis Falcon, the Iron Queen, one of the toughest uh, competitors in the UK. Uh, you know, she was unlucky to wear. Uh, sort of got cheated out of a victory by Nina Samuels at the last show. But, uh, you know, Nina, a great match that was as well. And, uh, you know, Alexis is, uh, you know, she's always ready for a fight. And this one's going to be something really great. Looking forward to it. Absolutely. And as you quite rightly said, uh, the winner of that could line themselves up uh, as a contender for the championship going into 2023. Uh, so there's uh, a lot riding on that match, as there is all of the matches that we're going to be talking about tonight. How about this one here? Tom Dawkins, the former Cara Noir, as we know, going up against Spike Treve's henchman, Bullet. And uh, Bullet's been a bit of a, a formidable force in the corner of Spike Treve over recent months. Um, and the two of them have been playing a lot of mind games towards Tom Dawkins. And uh, I'd say there's going to be a, a lot at stake, certainly for Tom Dawkins in this one, because uh, I think if he's able to handle Bullet, he gets one step closer to Spike Treve. Um, But uh, this has had an interesting build. Uh, you've still got two amazing performers there. are going to put on a real spectacle on November the 27th from the ballroom, Mike. Yeah, I still haven't had enough chance to see Tom as, as much as I'd like, but Bullet is somebody who I know is a formidable competitor. Only at uh, TNT Extreme Wrestling the other week, that he absolutely wiped the floor with poor Danny Proper, and uh, and you know it's uh, Bullet just proved exactly what he can do there. And uh, even in the ballroom, um, he managed to uh, prevent man like Darius getting involved in that matchup. He flung a referee across the room, poor. Tom Scarborough, I just seen him flying out the ring. He, he went about five meters into the, into the deck, and um, you know, Bullet is um, a, a brilliant wrestler, and a, a really tough guy. And uh, but Tom Dawkins, you know, we know what he can do. We know he's got it in him, and if he can beat Bullet, he will get a chance to face Spike Treve. So that's uh, you know, that's it. The Dark Guardian, uh, Dark Justice, Bullet, whatever uh, Spike wants to call him, is uh, it's sort of his disciple, his henchman, I suppose. Uh, you know, Bullet stands in the way and what a roadblock he is. So um, we'll have to see. Looking forward to that one in the ballroom for sure. Indeed, indeed. And uh, you can be there. There's still tickets available. Sunday the 27th, 3 p.m. start time from the Electric Ballroom in Camden, London. Go to progresswrestling.com 
forward slash tickets. You can get your tickets for that and the uh, final show of the year, Unboxing 5, Deal or No Deal. Um, you've got to be there to both shows, but this coming show, the Super Show, we get to 12 matches uh, for your money. Not the usual eight or nine, 12 matches. It is a Super Show with talent from all over the UK, all over the world will be joining us in the ballroom that Sunday. And uh, speaking of tremendous talent, uh, we got this one here. Rio, she's had her encounters, shall we say, with the Alana Austin experience. And uh, she gets a one-on-one -on -one match this time round with uh, someone she knows very, very well, Sky Smithson. But as we know, the Alana Austin experience uh, are never too far behind uh, any of their uh, members, their stable mates. But uh, that is an opportunity for Rio to, Rio to settle some scores, uh, but uh, not to underestimate Sky Smithson, who is uh, one of the very best female wrestlers in the UK, Europe and further afield. That's going to be an amazing clash, isn't it, Mike? It will. Rio won the Revelations of Divine Love Tournament. And, uh, you know, she's an absolutely brilliant wrestler. She's been to Japan this year. She's um, she's had... had some good matches in progress, but then she's ran into some tough individuals as well. She had a bit of a tough time, and then she's going to be facing the villainess, Sky Smith, and, and it'll be great to see if Rio can come out on top of that in that one. It's going to be tough with LA, and if Lana Austin's about as well, the whole Lana Austin experience is there. Uh, you know, they are, what a group that is. Um, and uh, it's going to be, it is going to be tough for Rio, that one, but, uh, you know, if anyone can fight through, it is Rio, so, um, yeah, looking forward to seeing what happens there as well. Absolutely, absolutely. You never know, Rio might have some uh, some friends to call upon if it really gets tasty, but that's going to be a fantastic match and one that I'm definitely looking forward to. How about this one here then, Mike? The world-famous cheeseburger going up against a man like Doris. Man like Doris has had a, an amazing 2022, no less in a progress wrestling ring. Um, he's been a contender for most of the championships, just come up short with the exception of the uh, the tag team titles, which he was a uh, uh, tag team champion alongside Dan Maloney, of course. So he's had a tremendous 2022 uh, going up against Cheeseburger, coming back over to the UK, back inside a progress ring. That's going to be a tremendous match, Mike. Um, and another mouth-watering tie between two of the world's best wrestlers. Yeah, man like Darice is about to go stratospheric. Um, 2023, I, I can see it being his year all over all over the world. He's such a great wrestler. It's been an absolute joy to watch him this year in a progress ring. And uh, some of the matches this guy's had have just been amazing. He's just got such a heart. He's a really talented wrestler. And um, what a way to end the year for him if he can, uh, you know, defeat Ring of Honor's own uh the world famous CB, who you know is this guy has been trained by Lance Storm, Pritchard, uh, you know Quackenbush as well. He's been wrestling on Ring of Honor since 2013. Wrestled in New Japan, a great talent. I'm really looking forward to seeing Cheeseburger over in the UK and in the ballroom taking on Doris. And that match is going to be another one which is just going to be mind blowing. And as you say, you mouth watering. Have you had your tea yet, Jonas? You just saw Cheeseburger and threw that in there, didn't you? <laughs> yeah, a really kind of mouth-watering uh, tie that we're all looking forward to. But uh, that, that's going to be an incredible match. And, and that alone uh, could be worth the price of admission. Two of the world's best talents. You've got Doris, who's had uh, the year of his life against uh, the world-famous Cheeseburger. You're not going to want to miss that one. Let's have a quick recap of the six matches we've spoken about very briefly so far, because it is quite a, 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 a huge card for a super show, of course, Mike. And, uh, of course, Charles Crowley versus Elijah. Uh, what a fantastic match. What a fantastic rivalry that's been. Um, and then we've got the hair versus mask match. Chuck Mambo going up against Kid Lycos. And that feud's got uh, very emotional, very passionate uh, between those two groups. Alexis Falcon versus Laura Di Matteo. That's going to be a fantastic match between two of the very best and brightest female talents in the UK and further afield today. And of course, we've got Tom Dawkins, the former Car Noir, going up against Spike Trevay's henchman and bullet. That's going to be a fascinating encounter. Rio versus Sky Spitzen. Uh, part of the Lana Austin experience. That's going to be a fantastic match. You have to be there for. And then, of course, the world famous Cheeseburger versus Man Like Doris. And of course, you could be there. You can join us. Um, you can join us on November the 27th, Sunday, November the 27th, from the Electric Ballroom in Camden, London. Just go to progresswrestling.com forward slash tickets uh, to be there to join us and to sample those six matches. But we've got another six matches to talk about, Mike. Um, and let's crack on. Half two of this hype show. 
with Big Damo and Axel Tisha, two individuals that know each other very, very well uh, from years gone by, going up against two members of North West Strong, of course, former Atlas champion Luke Jacobs, former Progress World Champion Chris Ridgway. I'd say this is going to be a really tasty encounter between four guys that love to hit hard. And of course, you've got Big Damo, who is carrying that Atlas Championship as we speak, Mike. We talk about mouth-watering ties. Those four individuals alone in the ring together, who knows what might happen. Definitely. It's going to be great to see uh, Tisha and Damo back together again. And uh, and obviously, Damo didn't just take uh, the Atlas Championship off Luke Jacobs. He actually took the Progress World Championship off Chris Ridgway during the Deadly Viper Tour as well. So uh, there's, there's a lot of bad blood in this match. The fact that, uh, you know, Damo said, I've got a friend coming to the ballroom. If you bring a friend, then we'll have a fight. But I don't think he uh, was expecting R- Riddy Ridgeway to come back. And, uh, you know, he is uh, strong as FC UK. So, uh, you know, it's going to be uh, a, it's going to be a fight, that one. And uh, Luke Jacobs is there. Uh, both both guys have, had, have been on the receiving end of that Damo bomb at the uh, at the past couple of shows. And I tell you what, that you know, you can see how, how it's been in other matches they've had. They've been absolutely hard-hitting brawls. And uh, and this one being a tag match with Ridgeway involved and Axel Tisha, this is just going to be amazing. It's I can imagine this going all around the ballroom. There's going to be bits of bodies flying off and all sorts. It's going to be chaos. <laughs> yeah, and this is going to be uh, Chris Ridgeway's return to progress after, after a few months' absence, traveling the world, uh, having great success, but back inside a progress ring with with lots to prove. As you mentioned, Big Damo, he's uh, not only took the the world title off of Ridgeway, he's taken the Atlas title off of Luke Jacobs. Um, so there's going to be some scores to settle there. But you've probably got four of the hardest hitting individuals that will be under that roof on. Sunday the 27th of November. Um, so uh, like I say, whether you're sat up close or further back in the electric ballroom, you're going to hear um, every single chop, slap and kick from a mile away. It's going to reverberate around that electric ballroom. But that's going to be a fantastic match between two or four of the very best uh, there is to offer. Um, and how about this one here? This Natural Progression Series 8 tournament has been, I think, one of the best NPS tournaments we've had. So you've had some great matches over the last few months, over the last few chapters. It is culminating at, so they think it's all over, Chapter 146, Ricky Knight Jr. and Tate Mayfairs. Now, we've seen these two in a progress ring many times before, Mike. Uh, we know RKJ is one of the hardest hitters, one of the most innovative and exciting young talents anywhere uh, in a wrestling ring in 2022. And he's got a lot to prove. He's got the bit between his teeth. He wants to walk away as the NPS 8 champion. Tate Mayfair's, though, by hook or by crook, he, he gets better and he gets better and he kind of progresses. Um, and uh, like I say, he has managed to fight his way into the final. Um, so these two, like I say, on November the 27th, they are going to put on a hell of a spectacle, a hell of a fight um, to see who gets crowned NPS 8 champion for 2022. And that picture there says it all, doesn't it, Mike? Uh, we know how much these two despise one another and how much they want to walk out the NPS champion uh, when all said and done after they think it's all over. Yeah, you can see that from that one picture. There's a lot of pride for both these guys. You know, RKJ, the the family lineage lineage is there. We know that. But, you know, that's somebody who I've watched for a few years now. And I've said this guy is going to be one of the biggest stars in professional wrestling. Um, And you can see it coming to fruition now. This year has been an amazing year for him. But this tournament means a lot to him. He wants to take that, you know, championship home with him. And uh, and Tate Mayfair's that you know what a year this guy's had. That this is somebody who only a year ago I'd, I'd seen bits of, but wasn't too familiar with. And the more I see him, I just I hate to say it, but I'm getting towards the stage where I just have to say it. But Tateness is greatness, and this guy, you know, this final they've beaten some of the best young wrestlers from around the world, break breakout stars who are going to be, you know, these are going to be the people you're going to see on TV in the next few years, and then. These guys, it's it's all come down to this. And, you know, you say May, Mayfair's is, you know, some questionable wins. I think Nico Angelo is going to want to have a word with him at some point because, uh, you know, no one likes to get hit with whatever it was. He got hit with brass knucks or something. But, you know, Tate, he's, he's delivered when he needs to. He's got where he wants to be. And this is his chance. And uh, Ricky Knight Jr., you know, 
this could be it. This could just be the exclamation mark on the top of an amazing year. So one of these guys is going to walk away as the MPS 8 winner. And, uh, you know, I don't know who it's going to be. It could be either of them. And, uh, you know, we'll have to be there to see who it's going to be. Absolutely. And uh, as always, Tate is talking a, a big game on social media, take, okay. talking a big game and all of his hype videos. <laughs> let's Let's see. Let's hope he can back it up. Um, at they think it's all over chapter 146 from the ballroom in uh, just a couple of Sundays time. We're just days away now uh, before we get to see all those matches and the final of the NPS 8 for 2022. Mike. Jonas, you just never know as well. You just never know what RKJ is going to do. He's so mm -hmm. unpredictable. You know, uh, I'm sure you were at, the, were you at the show when RKJ was against Leon Slater. The next minute yeah. he's on the balcony, he jumped off the balcony. I was like, what is going on here? You just <laughs> never know. Yeah. Like the hooligans themselves, I remember the first show I ever ring announced. I was there. Uh, I was ring announced, and the main event <clears throat> was um, the main event was Big Damo and Big Dave Mastiff as a tag team going against the hooligans. And uh, yeah, and the next minute, the hooligans were both jumping off balconies, and there was tables getting broken. There was bits of Liverpool flying about. It was uh, it was chaotic. But Ricky Knight's got he's got that in him, Junior. He could, uh, you know, just anything can happen when that guy's around the ring. <laughs> absolutely, absolutely, and that's going to be, like I say, a, a wonderful match. Could it, it top off a, a, a fantastic year for RKJ? Um, and could it be that the just desserts, the, the just rewards that Tate Mayfair believes he is owed uh, for all of his hard work? And there we go. And uh, I'm sure uh, Tate will be commenting in uh, in Twitter to our to our comments, like he tends to. Um, but uh, Tate, this is greatness. Uh, like I say, two great finalists there. How about this one, Mike? Anthony Gogo, Adebayo Akinfenwa going up against uh, Malik and Costa. Um, and I think Costa was very, very shocked, surprised, and uh, probably had to change his underwear after a Gogo called him out and uh, made this match in the ballroom at Chapter 145 Wrestling Witch Face, the last time we were in the ballroom. Um, but uh, we will see Adebayo um, Akinfenwa in the ring, team with the, the awesome Anthony Gogo going up against uh, Malik. And Costa, who's been a real thorn in their side for a while now. For anyone who's been living under a rock, you might not have seen this man right here beat the living piss out of an Olympian. And he has solidified himself as the toughest man in progress wrestling. Anthony Agogo, I know you're gonna hear this. You're gonna find yourself face to face with this man again. And when you do, you're gonna find out exactly why he is known as the Hit Ta! Tell you what, Malik, I will fight you right here in progress in a knockout match. And you wanna bring your little mate Costa? And I've got some friends as well. So I think I'm uh, gonna bring one of the boys. The governor holding court here in Camden. Joined of course by the Black and Fedwell. Get shook, I'm the leader, not a rook. Yeah, this is my chapter, I'm the one who wrote the book. This is our time, yeah, it's time to take over. No limits to us, yeah, I got plenty soldiers. Costa has once again inserted himself into this match. Oh, oh no! Yeah, in the face! Oh! Oh, oh! Costa made the mistake of his life there. See, I would take you with one hand, but there's no excuses, so we'll wait. This hand will be ready, we'll set this up, we go back to back. You ready? Is Bayo Akin Fenwa the beast? Is he setting challenge? A challenge to Costa and Malik? Costa, you know exactly where this goes. You get to the chip shop, you get the contract, and let's do this, son! I'm a king raw frog. King where I'm from. Mike, when we talk about uh, Super Show, it doesn't get any any bigger, any more super than having uh, Adebayo, Ekinfenwa, and uh, Agogo in the ring. And uh, like I say, I, I, dare I say, don't underestimate Malik. And I'm sure that uh, Costa will have some tricks up his sleeve. And of course, they've got their crew as well. So who knows what's going to happen? Give us your thoughts as we lead into this one, my friend. 
that's it. I was going to say definitely bring your crews along if you can for this one because I tell you what, that last time it was it was chaos and you know, uh, Akin Fenwar the beast. He was on beast mode that day. He broke his arm and yet he still planted Harrison Payne. There's that photograph doing the rounds on Twitter of Harrison Payne. Record scratch out and end up here. Everybody's upside down, just standing on his head. He's been absolutely knocked clean out by the beast with one hand. You know, a go go through him up in the air and there. And, you know, these guys are both absolutely talented stars. Obviously, the beast played, uh, you know, most famously for Wickham, Wickham Wanderers. I remember every time there was an FA Cup tie or uh, or whatever with Liverpool, he was uh, always heavily featured. You know, look at this guy. He's a monster. You know, he was the strongest guy on FIFA for a couple of years. Yeah. He's absolutely, you know, he, he became an absolute legend in British football. Every team he played for, the stories about him, you know, the beast, the big beast mode, and he scored goals for fun. But now he's coming after professional wrestling and, you know, he's working hard in the gym, working hard training. And you can see at the last show, I think he broke broke his arm or damaged his arm training that day. Still showed up, shows what a tough bastard he is. Yeah. And he absolutely, he knocked that guy clean out. And, you know, they're still scraping bits of, uh, bits of, um, Harrison Payne off the roof of the ballroom from what I've heard. But uh, and Anthony Agogo, what a star. You know, he's been on AEW, we've seen. He's been absolutely brilliant at progress. And what a professional. And, uh, you know, he's, uh, you know, only this week, he's been, I believe he's been on Pointless Celebrities this week. So, you know, this guy is an absolute star, former uh, Olympian, and uh, what a legend. And Malik and Costa, they could have bitten off more than they can chew this time, I think. Uh, honestly, I've not seen Costa in, in the ring action before. I've seen him causing enough trouble around it. But, uh, you know, unless he's got some hidden moves that I've not seen, I think it could really spell problems for Malik and Costa at the, uh, at the on the 27th for the ballroom. But uh, we'll have to see. Well, he, I think Costa's got to bring uh, everybody from the chip shop uh, to come down. And, and, and to, I think they'll need an army. I really do think they'll need an army. And uh, I, I, But don't underestimate Malik. Malik's had an amazing year, an amazing 2022. And he certainly deserves to be where he is. Uh, you know, had some great outings, super strong style this year. Um, and he's really, really kind of got under the skin of a go-go. And, uh, he, you know, I think... his head as well, Jonas. That's the thing. Yeah. He's got in his head for a go-go to be going to them. Um, you know, a go-go doesn't need to, you know, diss these guys. He's he's He could... He can outbox them, you know, verbally himself anyway. But, to, you know, the fact that he's lowered himself to their level in, in like, promos in the past and interviews, that it just shows they have got into his head. And yeah. then this is his, this is his chance to, to finish this, really. And, uh, you know, with uh, the Beast by his side, I think, uh, you know, it could be the last time we see Malik and Costa in progress. We'll have to speak. <laughs> Absolutely. But let us know in the comments what you think about the matches that we've hyped up so far. Let us know who you think might win, who might come out on top, what surprises you might think you'll see on the day. Uh, but please come and join us. Uh, November the 27th, Sunday, November the 27th, from the Electric Ballroom in Camden, London. Progresswrestling.com forward slash tickets is where you need to head right now to get your tickets for They Think It's All Over. Chapter 146. We've spoken about uh, the majority of the matches so far, a few more to hype up. Um, but with what we've kind of mentioned so far, what we've already hyped up and uh, previewed so far, Mike, uh, that is already an amazing card. So but some of the more main event matches uh, to talk about. Um, but uh, please do yourself a favour, progresswrestling.com forward slash tickets. And then this one here for the Progress Women's World Championship. Kanji who has been the, the, the dragon slayer. She's been the warrior. She has been a fighting champion, a fighting women's champion in progress uh, since Super Strong Style, where she got the, where she gallantly and uh, deservedly winning the title over Giselle Shaw, of course, going up against Lana Austin, um, the, the superstar Lana Austin, um, who has, has somehow managed to find her way into a championship match and um, I think that this one here is going to be a very, very intriguing match because once again, we spoke about the Lana Austin experience earlier on, Mike, and what a factor they can be in matches. And we spoke about Rio's match with Sky Smithson a bit earlier on and whether the Lana Austin experience will be a factor in that match. They're almost certainly going to be a factor in this championship match. So I think Kanji's going to have uh, eyes in, not just in the front of their head, but in the side and the back of their head uh, to really stay on top of the situation and to get the better of Lana Austin. Uh, nonetheless, 
not to take anything away from Lana Austin. She's had a, a fantastic year. Um, but uh, most like Tate Mayfair's manages to get into these uh, uh, matches and have these opportunities, sometimes by maybe underhanded tactics and shenanigans. Um, and uh, But I think Kanji's going to have a tough match here. And uh, Lana Austin, dare I say it, could have a successful night when all said and done. We've seen Kanji with her back against the wall time and time again. But with Lana Austin, Sky Smithson and LA Taylor, could this be more than Kanji can handle? The Lana Austin experience is slowly becoming one of the most dominant factions in progress history. We've had enough of your bullshit! Let them fight. Lana is still on the apron. Into oh, the German. What? Lana just stole it. And if four of the best can't stop them, who can? I told you I was going to start a revolution. Progress. I am yours. Dust settles. Will Kanji be able to hold on to the Progress Women's Championship? I'd love to know your thoughts on this one. Yeah, definitely. Well, Kanji has been uh, an absolute brilliant fighting champion. You know, some of the matches she's had this year have been brilliant. The one with Giselle Shaw, you know, got a justified standing ovation. Yeah. Uh, matches with LDM, she showed, you know, she can be brutal, Kanji. She's a, she's a fighter. And, you know... Um, Millie she's, McKenzie she's need... in Cardiff. Whew. Well, exactly. And she's, she's going to need to be... Match. But uh, Lana Austin has managed to pick up the pin against her in the last two matches that she's had. And Lana Austin is not someone who's just arrived on the scene recently. This is a, a veteran female wrestler who has wrestled for years. You know, she was on TNA British Boot Camp when she showed to everybody in the UK, you know, what a heart she has for wrestling. And then, you know, this last year, she's uh, she's buddied up with Sky Smithson and LA. And, um, you know, these this little gang, you know, there's definitely something about it. And Lana Austin is their leader. She's... Uh, you know, she's she's got a chance. She's got a, re a really big chance to be the yeah. uh, Progress Women's Champion. But uh, I think she needs to make sure she's got a game face on, make sure she's serious. This one, no karaoke shenanigans, because the last couple of times I've seen this, she's been as bothered about what karaoke song she's going to sing and what, you know, cosplay she's going to wear as focusing on that match. And, you know, going against Kanji, if you want to win the Progress Women's Championship, she's going to have to have a game face on. And it's going to be, uh, you know, I'm looking forward to that one. I really am. It's yeah. a huge opportunity for Lana Austin, and uh, and as well, Kanji. You know, that belt could be in jeopardy. We'll have to see. Absolutely, absolutely, lots at stake, um, and uh, lots to kind of keep your eye. You, you really are going to have to uh, keep your eyes peeled. That there's going to be action all over the ballroom during that one. But for the Progress Women's Championship, Kanji defending a championship one more time against Lana Austin. And uh, like I say, I think the Lana Austin experience are going to be the key factor here, not to take anything away from Lana, but um, she's always got Sky and LA in the background. They could come out at any time. Um, so that's going to be a fantastic match to look out for. Very, very intriguing, lots at stake. And then we've got this one here for the Progress Men's World Championship. Spike Trevay, the Sovereign Lord, the Vulture, of progress wrestling against former progress world champion Jonathan Gresham, former ROH world champion as well, of course. These two are going to put on a fantastic display. Uh, they think it's all over November the 27th, 3 p.m. start. That is your main event, and that's going to be a tremendous world championship. It's going to be amazing. And, uh, you know, I'm still not quite over Gresham. Losing the championship in such no. strange fashion back at the uh, it was back at the 10th anniversary at the garage when uh, Lycos Jim were causing havoc for him and, and turned on him in that one. And it was uh, 
you know, Gresh was sort of a character at that one, pouring people's drinks away and all, all that sort of stuff. And, uh, you know, he's had some time away. He's been over in the States, busy over there, doing all sorts of stuff. And then um, <clears throat> while he was over there, obviously, he had the uh, fatal four-way at Ric Flair's last match, um, which was when he defeated uh, Nick Wayne, Takeshita and Alan Angels to become the progress number one contender over there for whenever he, um, you know, deemed ready to go for the championship. And he's chosen... November 27th to go against Spike Trevay and uh, Jonathan Gresham. Obviously, we've seen him in action. He is one of the greatest pure wrestlers on the planet. Just always amazed by some of the stuff he can do in the ring. And if I was uh, Spike Trevay, I would be hugely concerned about what Jonathan Gresham can bring to the ballroom, you know, because this guy on his day is, you know, I'd argue he's one of the best technical wrestlers on the planet. Um, you know, I've seen the likes of Dean Allmark, um, you know, Joel Redman, amazing technical wrestlers in the UK, but Jonathan Gresham is just a pure wrestler, such a talent. As you know, uh, Jonas, if you're going to be the Ring of Honor champion, then, you know, you must be, uh, you know, you've got to be good at pure wrestling and everything. So um, this is uh, this is a huge match for Spike. And, uh, you know, Spike, will Bullet be by his side for this one? You know, could that be a factor in the match? That's something we've got to bear in mind. But uh, Gresham, on his day, can beat anybody. And we know that. And uh, Spike is going to have to be absolutely ready for this one. We know what Spike can be like, but uh, can he get away from the tentacles of the octopus here? Mm, very interesting. Look, like I say, I don't think Spike can out-wrestle Jonathan Gresham. Or, you know, even on Spike's best day, I don't believe that he can out-wrestle Jonathan Gresham. But he's always got a trick or two up his sleeve. Like you say, there's, there's the, the factor of, um, of Bullet possibly lurking in the background, possibly being in his corner after his match with Tom Dawkins, of course. Um, there's going to be lots going on here. Spike's not going to want to uh, lose or, or uh, give up the world championship. No way. So close to the end of the year. He's going to want to carry that title through to 2023. So he's got to find some way, somehow, to defeat, to overcome Jonathan Gresham, one of the best pure wrestlers in the world, without doubt. So it'd be interesting to see what, what tactics, what game plan Spike has going into the match, how he executes that uh, them tactics um, on November the 27th. And you can find out, you can be there, you can witness it with your own eyes. Don't be that guy that misses out. Go to progresswrestling.com forward slash tickets and be there. There are still tickets available. Um, and once again, you know, throw us your comments. Uh, tell us who you think is going to come out on top of that world championship match, Spike Trevay versus Jonathan Gresham. Um, but uh, that's all 12 matches. Um, and, and let's just recap the final six. We, of course, had this amazing encounter. Four big, hard-hitting guys. Current Atlas champion, Big Damo, and Axel Tisha. Two guys that know each other very, very well. Former tag team partners, of course. Going up against Northwest Strong's. Luke Jacobs and Chris Ridgeway. That is going to be a hard hitting encounter, hard hitting tag match. We've got the final of the NPS, the Natural Progression Series 8 tournament for 2022. RKJ, uh, one of the, the best young pro wrestlers anywhere. Let's be honest, not just the UK and Europe, but further afield, going up against Tate Mayfair's. Uh, uh, if, if you look him up on Google, search uh, the, the greatest professional wrestler to ever walk planet Earth, and I'm sure you'll see Tate Mayfair's there. Those two are going to put on a fantastic display to see who comes out MPS 8 champion for 2022. Anthony Gogo and Adebayo Akinfenwa are going to be against Malik and Costa. This feud, this storyline has been brewing for months now, and uh, the culmination will happen at chapter 146. They think it's all over uh, from the electric ballroom in Camden. And then, of course, we've got Kanji, the Progress Women's World Champion, going up against Lana Austin. And uh, like I say, Lana, the, uh, the Lana Austin experience, never too far behind. That's going to be a really interesting championship match. And uh, to see if Kanji can overcome like she has done over the last few months. And then, of course, we've got Spike Treve defending the Progress World title against Jonathan Gresham, former Progress World Champion, who's going to be looking to come to London and uh, regain his championship that he lost uh, a few months ago. And uh, Spike Trevay is not going to want to give it up too easy. So in a nutshell, that's our 12 matches. Um, 
a very big nutshell because, of course, 12 matches. It's a super show, Mike. It's all going down. They think it's all over November 27th. Progresswrestling.com forward slash tickets is where you need to be heading right now. Uh, Mike, uh, what are your thoughts on that card? Pretty tremendous and heavily stacked. Mate, it is heavily stacked. It's an amazing card of wrestling. Some of the, the best talent in the world. I absolutely cannot wait for it. But one thing I just wanted to go back to before before we move on mm. was that, uh, you know, think who Spike Trevay has beaten. He's beaten some of the best wrestlers to, to keep that championship. Dan Maloney, um, Mike Bird, people like that. He, he, is, he is on an absolute amazing run. And obviously he's took... You know, Cara Noir away from progress. He's took it away from the fans. He's took it away from Tom Dawkins himself. Spike has had an amazing year in, in British professional wrestling. And, uh, you know, just think what a culmination it would be for him if he could add Jonathan Gresham onto that list of people he'd beaten uh, and defended the Progress Championship against. That would just be something amazing. But uh, we will have to see in the ballroom 27th of November. Can't wait to be there. Hope you will all join us there. John, as, as always, a big thank you for, for hosting the Hype Show today. It's always a pleasure to chat to you, my friend. And uh, I was going to give a big shout out to uh, Catch Pro Wrestling in Manchester and also Future Shock Wrestling, who I've visited this week. And uh, they both put on great shows. And it's brilliant to see so much great wrestling going on all around the UK and further afield as well. And, uh, you know, absolutely brilliant to see all that going on. And uh, well done to everyone involved. And uh, stay safe, gang. <laughs> there we go. And uh, one final time, Mike, before we uh, bid our viewers farewell, is uh, join us. There are still tickets available November the 27th. They think it's all over. Chapter 146. You're at progresswrestling.com forward slash tickets. Click on the link in the description to this hype show. It couldn't be any easier. It will transport you to the Dice FM app. Get your tickets today for They Think It's All Over. Get your tickets today uh, for this wonderful show here, which is going to be on the last show of the year. Chapter 147, Unboxing Live 5. Deal or no deal once again from the Electric Ballroom in Camden, London. December the 30th, it's going to be a Friday and it's uh, back to our usual start time of 3.30, Friday, December the 30th. You're not going to want to miss that one. Uh, but Mike, as always, it's been a pleasure doing these hype shows with you. Uh, it's been uh, an honour to uh, cover this super show with you. Um, but uh, I look forward to seeing you in the ballroom as do, uh, I'd say, I, I look forward to seeing um, all of our progress fans in the ballroom Sunday the 27th, Mike. Yeah, I may be in normal clothes this time, maybe a suit rather than a Mario outfit this time. But we'll have to see. <laughs> Brilliant. Catch you soon, Mike. Thanks so much, mate. See you soon, everybody. Spectacular. That's what I was. But I have made a mistake. My name is Charles Crowley. And this is the story of how I die. Are you rolling? I have a story for you. Elijah, absolutely spectacular. Everything about him, he is a star. Did you see the little look he gave you there? All I'm saying is you need to open your eyes to the opportunities that could be standing right in front of you. What the hell was that? It seems like an opportunity has presented itself, Hustle. Goodbye, my friend. He is constantly evolving, and it's led me to a theory. A theory that I cannot wait to prove. That is dominance, and it's dominance that I knew was going to happen. Crowley is in control! This man right here, in the, this short period of time, have you seen the distance he has travelled? He is a future progress champion. Look into my eyes. I am the most truthful person here. Look, I, I appreciate everything you're doing for me. Do you think maybe we're aiming a little too high? It's okay. This was expected. I've listened to you talk and talk and talk and talk and talk! What are you keeping from me? You have to trust the process, trust Crowley. 
do you know how lucky you are to be by my side? It's gonna be Charles Crowley versus Elijah. I think Crowley might be losing it. He might be seeing something the rest of us aren't. Winner of the match, the spectacular Charles Crowley! You didn't tell me that you had fight like that in you. No more secrets. We've got work to do. Locked in chicken wing. Oh my wing. god, where did he Crowley, go? Crowley's locked up and Crowley taps. Crowley not overly pleased with Elijah. I, I lost? Yeah, you lost. Are you kidding me? Yeah, because of you. I came out to help you. You lost oh, the okay. match. Hey, I see you trying to help me, but match. I didn't ask for your help. No. I want you to leave. You know, you say you're spectacular, but you, you, you weren't. You weren't. He just left you there, and you were just sat there as nothing, and you felt it. So, I've forgotten something. I've forgotten something. Something's in... What have I forgotten? I need to leave. I need to go. You've seen these numbers, right? On the posters, on the videos, social media. Last week, they were on the screen in Cardiff. My home! Get out here, you absolute twat. Did you miss me? Have you lost your fucking mind? On the contrary, I found it, okay? I pushed you away. I maybe thought I was something different, something unique, something spectacular. But I'm I'm not. No, but you, you, Elijah, you are spectacular. And I've known from the beginning now the numbers. You know what they are? They're all your wins and losses. Losses and wins, wins and losses, losses and wins, and I figured it out. You never lose to the same person twice. You lose and then you learn, you adapt, you evolve, and then you win without fail. Now I've come back to progress to join you. No thanks. As much as it pains me to say it, you've beaten me in progress before. Which means if you and me were to wrestle, I would win. <laughs> <laughs> no, but seriously, I'm not back here to fight you. I'm, I'm nothing. I'm a worm. I'm a mere worm. But we no, 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 no. You know what? Let's do it. You and me, November 27th, right here in the Electric Ballroom. sure who I am anymore. The one thing I am sure of, this is a fight I cannot win. Charles Crowley is dead. Long live Elijah. <laughs> <laughs>